I, I realized that it might be easier to uh, see that if I highlighted it. How's that for getting my brain on? See? Evanuk as musical director. Yeah, we have to read it backwards, but... Uh, back to the letter. You were hired to fulfill... You were hired to fulfill my vision of the play, and you found that impossible. It's not a play, it's a musical production. Um, and it's not just a musical production, it's a freaking opera. Um, now this is key. The part of Larry's vision that is so easily, provably impossible other than also his vision of how a rehearsal should go. One of the things he requires of me is, uh, when he says, if you can't do this, quit, is he says, integrating, also integrating the band is your responsibility. It's impossible to integrate a band if there is no band. If the guitar player comes by himself and then quits, and then a bass player and a drummer come in who don't know the show and aren't strong readers, and there's no guitar player, so we still don't have everybody in the band together. And we're directed to... His, his, his direction was, uh, we'll just run the show and see what happens. You, you can't integrate a band like that. But uh, I'll talk about that later. I might have to... I'm getting redundant. I'm trying not to, because I know this is long enough as it is. But the part that's so, that, that requires no explanation in case people don't know what a rehearsal is. The reason I emailed Larry to tell him it was not possible is that they were going to sing over an amplified rock band without microphones. Larry said it was impossible to have microphones. We can't possibly have microphones. A sound engineer told them so. This is nonsense, and what he's trying to do is impossible. I'm a professional in this field, and when does not need to be? It's common sense. I think you both know that you need microphones to sing on top of a rock band. The letter. After that, you apologized numerous times and even offered to help our production if I did things your way. Acoustic piano, no band, etc. Right! As long as you let me do my job. His way was impossible. Here was... Here was his response to my offer to help him out as long as he didn't try to do something impossible. In an email dated October 28th, 08, Larry writes, Thank you for your offer. We're okay. We're going with Mike's. I can show you these emails. I can show you all of them. I show them to other people. It's a, thanks, thank God for the iPhone. I can just, you know. Here it is. L. Goldstein at tandemfriends.org. Again, this is the key issue. One, one of the two main key issues. First, he won't let us prepare the music. He won't let us learn the music. And two, this business of no mics. Larry's vision was to do it without microphones, which is impossible to do over a rock band. We all know that. And not only is it impossible, it's negligent, as it will almost certainly result in your students losing their voices, which it did. Can someone please explain to me how Larry managed to accomplish the impossible? These were the conditions under which I told Larry that what he was doing was not possible. Is this not a breach of contract? What other sorts of nonsense was going on in Larry's mind? Let's go back to the my way or the highway email in which I was told to either do this and that or quit. Why did he send it? We still haven't gotten to the bottom of that. We still haven't figured out what, what did I do to deserve that? What was he thinking? This is unheard of. A director inviting his accompanist to quit. We've established that there is no need for concern about me quitting at the last minute, that I am a professional in this field, and that I can't afford to pull a stunt like that. And that he has done exactly that, breached contract, 
the one time I was hired by him before. And there was never any mention of this in the email. That last sentence was the only time it came up, completely out of the blue. My reliability is reflected in the fact that I asked him for permission for something I didn't need his permission for, according to our contract. Larry was asking me to make up the hour I would miss, the hour of rehearsal that I would miss to play at this party. He, he didn't, it wasn't that he was mad that I wouldn't be at the rehearsal. That, that's not, that wasn't it at all. He, he said, yeah, sure, that's fine. You know, the one time he showed some decency and you know, possession of a brain. So he was asking me to make up this hour on a Sunday rehearsal. I couldn't. I had to play somewhere else. I would have been happy to do so if I had been available, but I was not. In an email dated September 1st, 2008, I emailed Larry that I accepted his offer, which was $700 for the rehearsals, which will buy no less than 28 and no more than 35 hours at no less than 20 an hour and no more than 25 an hour. As you can see, I was not required, according to our contract, to make up the hour. Why are we being vague about my hourly pay? Why is it not just a flat $20 an hour? Because when Larry first called me and asked me to do the show, after telling me the dates and me checking my date book and seeing that I was indeed available, I then asked him the next logical question, question which was, how much does it pay? Larry told me it would pay between $20 an hour and $25 an hour, with the shows paying more than the rehearsals. I asked if he could be more specific, and he told me that the shows would pay $16.66. Not quite that bluntly, but almost. Larry gave me credit for knowing that 16 is not a number on the high end of between 20 and 25, but he didn't give me credit for my ability to do simple math as he speaks. He told me that the total budget was 1000 and that 800 was for the rehearsals. Easy math, right? That leaves $200 for the shows, of which there would be four. Makes $50 a show, right? Which means that the total time commitment must be two hours for $25 an hour, two and a half hours for the lowest, $20 an hour. Did I create a gotcha moment? Yes, I did. I knew something like this would happen, and so I used Larry's unethical business practices to my advantage. The thespian should give his accompanist more credit. Bottom line, our contract states that I do not have to make up the hour, that for $1,000 he gets the show plus 28 to 35 hours of musical rehearsals, he was looking at 34. This is the reason for the dispute, $20, one hour. I have no choice but to tell horror stories about your school and your time and mine are being wasted like this over $20 worth of work that I did not have to make up. 